Hi, I'm Brian Jensen. I work for UW Extension's Integrated Pest Management Program and would like to talk about some of the early season low ground insect pests on corn. For most current management recommendations including insecticides, please go to our learning store uh, where you can search for our publication titled Pest Management in Wisconsin Field Crops. If you did a search for A3646, that should be your, your top choice. That publication is updated uh, annually and will include the latest recommendations. I'd mentioned we want to talk about the early season below ground insect pests. By that I mean seed corn maggot, wireworm, and also white grubs. For these three insects on corn, there are no rescue treatments available. Once we have the corn planted, there is nothing we can do to uh, uh, prevent any further damage. However, it's going to be important that we scout for them. We want to look for the damage when we're taking uh, plant stand counts or doing other uh, early season field activities. And we want to provide that grower, grower with an estimate of the percent stand loss or damage. And uh, it's important to know that so they don't assume that any uh, uh, less than optimum yield is a result from uh, uh, a hybrid that's not working or seed that's not germinating. So when we're out scouting early season and we have uh, some stand loss, we want to determine what that exact cause is. Is it seed corn maggot, wireworm, white grub, or is it something different? Because if we develop a field history, especially for wireworm and white grub, that can help us choose a preventative practice prior to planting. Seed corn maggots have a very wide host range. Uh, they do damage corn. Soybeans are much more susceptible. There are four or five generations per year, and it's the first three population peaks that give us the most problems in corn. And those will occur at 360, 1,080, and 1,800 degree days. And that is a base temperature of 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Damage symptoms from seed corn maggots, the seed just doesn't germinate and we have a skip in the roll. Um, at times we'll see holes in the first, maybe the second leaf, but once that corn plant has emerged, that damage is mostly uh, cosmetic. And what we really need to be concerned about is that, that damage to the seed uh, when it doesn't germinate or emerge. There are some uh, potential damage scenarios that may increase our chance for damage from seed corn maggots. Any time that we have a uh, green manure or uh, livestock manure that we're plowing down, that can be very attractive to the adult flies. Any time that we go through some recent tillage, uh, that can be very attractive to the adult flies. And at times, uh, we can be coming back to have after our first pass in that field and already start to see some of the adults flying in. And, um, typically you'll find them within the first couple of feet above the soil surface. Also, anytime we have cool wet soil conditions, anything that's going to delay germination or emergence will increase our chances for damage from seed corn maggot. Here's a, a picture of a seed corn maggot, the larvae. And again, the adults do not damage corn, it's just the larvae. They can be upwards of uh, maybe uh, 8 to 3 sixteenths of an inch long. They're white and kind of cigar shaped. So they may cause uh, uh, reduced emergence, but in this case we can see just a couple uh, holes on the leaf. That's uh, cosmetic only. That plant should not have any economic yield loss to it. Here's a picture that we have. Uh, it is of the same field, planted the same time. The picture on the right had a uh, seed treatment on it and we had pretty good emergence. Where the picture on the left we had much uh, 
a much more spottier emergence than we had long skips in the row. From a grower standpoint, they might assume that the planter wasn't working or that the seed did not germinate. And that's why it's important when you find these skips in the row that you verify what was the cause. Uh, so as you get into harvest, if you have any uh, lower yields than expected, you might have a reason for why uh, that yield was so low. Wireworms. Only the, the larvae will damage corn. Those larvae will be hard shelled. They're going to be copper colored. And you can have three sets of jointed legs right behind the head. Um, those latter two characteristics are going to be important. <clears throat> because on seedling corn we may have um, millipedes in the field, especially during cool wet years. And millipedes uh, by and large do not damage corn. Uh, millipedes will be a, a dark gray to almost black color. They'll have a fringe of hairs, legs, fringy type of uh, legs running the full length of the body. So you want to make sure you have wire worms and to uh, differenti differentiate between uh, millipedes and, and uh, wire worms. Wire worms are going to be more of a copper colored and you'll be able to see only three sets of jointed legs. The larval life cycle, depending on species, may be between two and five years, and they will migrate up and down within the soil profile. Uh, and that's important to note because you may see a poor plant stance or you may see symptoms in seedling corn from wireworms. Dig up the plant, look at where the seed was, and find uh, nobody home. That's because under drier, warmer conditions, they'll migrate down into the soil profile. So to identify a wireworm damage, uh, you may have to go more by the symptoms than uh, finding the actual wireworm there. So they'll attack the corn seed, <clears throat> and they can also burrow into the plant, but that will always be below ground level. They do not uh, uh, go above ground. So they can enter that seedling either above or below the growing point. If they enter it above the growing point, what you will find is holes in the emerging leaves. If they enter that plant uh, below the growing point, your above ground symptoms will either be dead heart or wilted whirl, uh, kind of different names for the same symptoms. So th the damage is commonly found in corn planted after pasture or alfalfa because they tend to have a lot of grassy weeds in it. But anytime you have a, a, a prior crop with a lot of weeds, whether it's corn or soybeans, that can be attractive to the adult uh, beetle to come in and lay eggs. Sometimes it's going to be that second or third year of uh, corn after the alfalfa or sod will have the most, most damage. Because in that first year corn, if it's planted after alfalfa, the wireworms can feed on that, that taproot for a period of time before they move down into the soil profile. And then they'll come back up because it's an extended life cycle as the uh, larvae. And then that second or third year, you may see more damage uh, than the first year. Here's a picture of what uh, wireworms and their damage can look like. Again, we have uh, the larvae are copper colored. There's a couple in this shot. Also notice that there's an entry hole on a couple of these plants, some scarring, and that damage will always uh, be below ground level. Wireworms do not come above the soil surface. Your above ground symptoms could be this dead heart or wilted whirl. Uh, that's from larvae feeding at the growing point below ground level. So your newly emerging leaves uh, will be wilted or if they're feeding uh, above the growing point, um, those newly emerging leaves will have holes in them. The final below ground insect pest that we'll talk about on corn is white grubs. They have a three year life cycle. One year as the adult, which is also called the, the May beetle or June beetle, and two years in the larval stages. To identify the larvae, 
Uh, the head is going to be kind of a brown or tannish color, a white uh, or cream colored body. Usually they'll be curled up in a little C-shaped pattern. And length, depending on is if it's the first or second year as the uh, immature stage, they'll be anywhere from a quarter of an inch long up to maybe an inch long in length. Here's a close-up of what uh, the immature stage can look like. Points to look at are that tan colored head, white or cream colored body, and that C-shaped pattern. White grub larvae feed on corn roots. Occasionally, once in a great while, there may be some uh, below ground stalk tunneling, tunneling, but for the most part, we're concerned about any root feeding. The damage is most likely to occur in corn planted after a uh, pasture or alfalfa because there's a lot of grassy weeds in it, and those are attractive to the adult to come in and lay eggs, or if we have any other crop with a lot of grassy weeds, uh, that can also increase our likelihood of having damage from white grub. And just to finish up, um, this is a close-up of damage to seedling corn from white grub. Uh, you can see kind of a, a, a healthy plant here on the right, and these other couple of corn plants uh, have had significant feeding from white grub larvae. The above ground symptoms may look like it's a nutrient deficiency symptom. Maybe it's some, uh, may look like another disease or uh, some environmental problems, but do remember to dig up the roots and verify um, that you have white grubs or not. So that concludes our session on, on early blow ground insect pest of corn. Thank you.